Scattering, Part 1. There's many important uh, visual effects which involve a scattering of light. Uh, here are some examples, things like clouds, uh, fog. Uh, some materials have their characteristic look due to subsurface uh, scattering. Uh, here you see a photo of uh, scattering of light as it passes into and out of wax. Uh, even more important example is uh, human flesh. Now to understand the different types of scattering, it's important to realize that uh, we have uh, different effects due to the size of the particles that are doing the scattering. And uh, we'll focus mainly on two types of scattering. Uh, scattering by the very tiniest of particles, such as air molecules. Uh, this is Rayleigh scattering. And then scattering by uh, somewhat larger particles, uh, which is called Me scattering. Uh, larger yet uh, is not really uh, scattering. It's uh, more of a combination of reflection and refraction. We'll see some examples here in just a moment. So the scattering by very tiny particles, uh, such as uh, gas fumes, uh, fine smoke from a cigarette, or even air molecules, uh, that uh, scattering by tiny particles is strongest for the blue side of the spectrum and weaker for the red side of the spectrum. And so uh, we tend to see uh, this type of scattering as bluish. Um, in fact, here's a graph of the scattering intensity um, graphed against the size of the particle. So we see that a particle, uh, say fine smoke particle uh, of 20 nanometers, uh, it scatters some red light, it scatters more uh, green light, but the strongest uh, scattering is uh, for blue light. And so uh, we see uh, this as bluish. Very uh, similar type of scattering is called Tyndall scattering. Again, this is also um, scattering by uh, very small particles, and so it is uh, bluish. Uh, we see that in some materials like this opalescent glass, uh, the blue um, iris is actually a result of Tyndall scattering by very small particles. There isn't a blue pigment, it's um, uh, Tyndall scattering. And Tyndall uh, blue is this characteristic color resulting from Tyndall scattering. Uh, we also see this, uh, for example, in a very dilute mixture of uh, very fine particles like uh, India ink. Uh, has a bluish uh, tint when it's uh, diluted, even though the uh, <clears throat> in denser it's uh, uh, black from absorption. Now, for larger uh, particles, still very tiny particles, but um, somewhat larger particles, uh, we have what's known as me scattering, and uh, some examples of this would be the scattering by the fat globules in milk which give it its characteristic white color, the um, scattering by titanium oxide uh, crystals, say in uh, titanium white uh, paint, and uh, of water droplets in uh, clouds. Now in this case, here's a similar graph of scattering strength uh, for these larger particles, and you see that here the graph is all mixed up uh, for the different uh, wavelengths of light. So some um, particles such as 800 nanometer uh, don't scatter blue very much, they scatter red more. Uh, somewhat larger ones um, scatter blue more and red less, some scatter green more. Uh, so, uh, And since the sizes of particles tend to have a distribution, they're not all the same size, uh, this results in the um, mixture scattering all the different hues uh, equally resulting in uh, white. And let's uh, 
see an example of this. Uh, so I have some uh, warm water here. You can see maybe a little bit of steam coming out and we're going to dye it uh, green. And then I'm going to put a chunk of dry ice into the water to create some fog. So we're going to see water vapor or uh, just, just water droplets, tiny water droplets uh, bubbling out and even though the water is uh, tinted green you see that the fog is white because uh, what you're uh, seeing is the scattering of light by these uh, tiny droplets. Now the larger size um, particles don't actually uh, do to uh, have true scattering. Uh, they actually reflect the light off the surface uh, or if they're transparent like rain then we have some refraction and uh, transmission and, and possibly also some reflection. So uh, when we see the rain or uh, sand in a sandstorm or, or other sorts of suspended uh, particles, what we're really seeing is uh, reflection from the surfaces of those, of those particles. Uh, when you see a rainbow, what you're actually seeing is reflected light from the water droplets. Now, scattering is uh, important in um, explaining this uh, effect of atmospheric perspective. That is, when you look in the distance, uh, objects in the distance tend to have a bluish, unsaturated color, and this is due to a combination of Rayleigh, Tyndall, and uh, me scattering. You see this uh, often in paintings as well. So, uh, what is happening here is light is coming from the sun and it is entering the atmosphere and when you look at the distant mountains you're seeing uh, light that's coming from the mountains to your eyes but between you and the mountains there's a large amount of air and everywhere in that volume of air some Rayleigh scattering is occurring and so some blue light is being mixed in and also reaches your eye. So uh, you are basically seeing a bit of the atmosphere. Uh, it's a weak effect, but if you are looking at a great distance then the accumulated scattering over uh, many miles of air uh, creates this bluish tint. And uh, it should be emphasized that this reminds us that the sky, the daytime sky, is an important light source. So it's not just the sun in the sky which is a source of light, it's also uh, the atmosphere itself which is a light source. This uh, atmos effect of atmospheric perspective was probably first um, utilized and understood and described by Leonardo da Vinci who uh, called it perspective of color so he made very good use of it in the uh, backgrounds in his paintings uh, here's three of the more famous ones now you can also see this uh, at a more uh, pronounced uh, effect when there's a fog or smog uh, so you see here the um, due to uh, these larger particles uh, doing the scattering now uh, things are white uh, so this is uh, me scattering and uh, when we look in the distance uh, not only do we have a lot of white which desaturates uh, the image but uh, it also removes uh, contrast notice that the clock face we don't even see any details of the front of this uh, uh, tower, this is Big Ben uh, tower, uh, and in fact we just basically see a silhouette because the fog is actually a very significant uh, light source, both the fog in front of us and the fog uh, behind the tower. It's a very different situation underwater. Uh, 
Water is transparent, but it strongly absorbs a red light uh, much more than blue light. So uh, things underwater tend to have a bluish uh, tint as well. However, instead of being desaturated, uh, it tends to be saturated when it's uh, clear water. On the other hand, if the water is somewhat murky, then we have some me scattering from suspended particles or possibly um, reflection from um, suspended particles as well. So uh, then uh, that may cause some, some desaturation. Uh, it's very easy for particles to be suspended in water due to uh, buoyancy. It's um, very different yet in uh, space. So here we see a photo from one of the lunar missions and uh, obviously there's no atmosphere. So there's no atmospheric perspective. There's no ambient light from the sky. Um, shadows are very hard. It's uh, very difficult to estimate distances. Uh, we don't know if these are nearby hills or very distant mountains because we have no atmospheric perspective um, to provide a visual cue for distance. Now, to understand one more effect of the atmosphere, you need to remember that when uh, light is scattered, say by fog, and we are seeing the fog, this also means that if we look at the light source, say if we're looking at the sun through the fog, the sun will be uh, dimmer because some of the light has been uh, scattered uh, by the fog. And uh, this helps us understand the um, colors of uh, sunrise and sunset. So when the sun is overhead, uh, say um, at noontime or close to noon, then we look up and we see the sky is blue. But if it's uh, close to sunset, then the sun is very low in the sky and the sunlight from the sun has passed through a long uh, distance of atmosphere. Um, so as it passes through all of that uh, atmosphere, blue light is everywhere being scattered out of the um, uh, light coming to us from the sun. And so when we finally see it, uh, the remaining color is uh, the sunlight minus the blue light and minus a little bit of green light. And so it is an orange uh, color. So we, uh, we see this effect also in um, opalescence. So here I have a piece of aerogel which uh, scatters um, similar to Rayleigh scattering by, by Tyndall scattering. So when, um, when I shine uh, light on it, it, it becomes bluish, but you notice that the light that passes uh, through the aerogel is uh, yellowish. So um, the aerogel is uh, scattering blue light and the light that is not scattering, scattered, um, is results in being uh, yellow. So in uh, summary, extremely small particles scatter mostly blue light. This is known as uh, Rayleigh uh, or Tyndall scattering. Small particles scatter all wavelengths, so the scattered light uh, looks white. This is uh, me scattering. Uh, objects in the distance have a bluish unsaturated color due to Rayleigh, Tyndall, and me scattering. So this is atmospheric perspective. And we saw that um, underwater or in space, the effects are somewhat different. The daytime sky is an important uh, light source. This is something that's uh, perhaps not appreciated. And Rayleigh scattering of blue light is what is causing the blue sky during the day and the reddish skies uh, which we see at sunrise and sunset. We'll see more about scattering in uh, part two.